Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get our button for our, our Add to Wish List. We're going to make it so when we click Add to list, Wish List, this turns red and says Remove. And then when you remove it, it takes it from the list. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And it's going to be really cool. So how do we do that? Well, what's really cool is with, with React, okay, unlike standard HTML and CSS applications, we can actually write conditional-based styling for our components which is pretty awesome. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to write some logic here in our render function. Let's change this back to JSX. I feel like it keeps changing on us here. OK, so there's our render function. And what I want to do is we want to know if, uh, if an item is on the wish list. OK, so what we need to do is have another function uh, called item, well, called is on the wish list, or another uh, state property is what I meant to say. So we're going to say, on, well, actually, we're in the wrong thing here, aren't we? We're in the uh, we're in the wish list. We want to be in the product. There we go. Here in the product, and in this product here, what we want to do is say this dot state equals on wish list. So it's going to be a boolean. Is this item on the wish list? Because we need to know that so we know if the if the button should change colors or not. Okay. And we're going to say ds.item on wish list. Now, this function doesn't exist yet, but we're going to create it right now. Okay. Item on wish list. So let's go to our data service here. And let's create a function for this. I'm still bothered why this one is like not colored, but uh, whatever. Whatever. Okay. So here we go. Right about here item on wish list equals item equals so we're going to pass in the item and then check if it's on the wish list okay so for var x equals zero x is less than wish list dot length x plus plus we're just going to do a simple for loop and go through them all if wish list x dot id is equal to is equal to what do you want to say? Item dot underscore ID. So let's make sure uh, it's the correct item. If it's on the wish list, we'll return true. If we go through the entire for loop and it's not there, we need to return false. So is the item on the wish list? Okay, we're just returning a true or a false. It's a fug it's a function here, and it's now available inside of our product. Okay, so now when the when the uh, constructor first loads. We grab that to see if it's on the wish list, if it's on the current wish list uh, in our application. Okay, and now what we can do is we can write conditional based logic to style that button. So we're still in product, right? Okay. Var button class. Okay, just roll with me here. Well, you'll see how it all works out. If this dot state dot on wish list, so let's see if it's on the wish list when we get to this render function, we're gonna say button class equals button button dash danger. Okay. Otherwise, button class equals button button dash primary. So we're basically we're creating a style based on conditional logic. If it's so basically if it's on the wish list, let's make it red so you can remove it. If it's not on the list wish, wish list, let's make it blue so you can add it. Okay? And then we can make a few changes down here. So see this class name? Instead of hard coding it in here, all we need to do now is our special React syntax there to do some JavaScript. And we can pass in the button class. See this variable, it's a string, and it'll just turn into there. Pretty dang cool. And then over here. We can write a ternary operation. If you haven't seen one of those before, it basically is an operation that it does a condition. And if it's true, it chooses the option on the left. If it's false, it chooses the option on the right. And so what we can do is we can say this dot state dot dot on wish list. So if that's true, we'll do a question mark. If that's true, then we'll say remove from wish list. And then the colon says otherwise. And then we'll say add to cart. Okay, so again, this is just the title of the button. And we're saying, hey, if the wish list, if it's on the wish list, is that's true, do this first one. If it's false, do the second one. Add to cart. Okay. I think it's pretty cool.
last thing we need to do on this screen here is just in the on button clicked. Now we got to run some different logic because in one case it's adding, in one case it's removing. So if this dot state dot on wish list, so if it's on if it's on the wish list, it means we need to remove it. So ds dot remove wish list item this dot props dot product. We probably should have said remove wish list product or something just to keep it consistent, but oh well. Otherwise, um, it's not on the list and we want to add it. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if it works. Let's go find our handy dandy browser. Well, it's really not yelling at us yet, so. Uh, did it even refresh? Hmm. I feel like something's wrong. Let's take a look here, double check. I didn't get any errors. Did I save it? Hmm. Okay, so if it's on the wish list, button, button danger. If it's not on the wish list, button is button primary. Okay, that makes sense. And this dot state, if it's on the wish list, we're gonna say remove from wish list. Otherwise, add to cart. I feel like none of our logic here is quite working. On wish list, am I spelling it wrong? Item on wish list. Let's. Maybe I'm going crazy here. I don't know. Let's let's load this up again. It's loading. Yeah, it's just not working. Let's let's fix it. Close this. Minimize this. I know. I know why. It's because we're never we're never refreshing the screen. That's what's going on here. So we need to import our notification service. Notification service from services slash notification 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 service. <sighs> okay, and then let's uh, let's get our notif in here as well too. Really, you're not gonna autocomplete for us. No to nothing, nothing. All right, I can't even remember what it's called. Make me work more than I need to. All right, here in our product, let's just put this right in here. Okay, and we'll just do the same thing. We'll add the obs the, the observers. In fact, was our wish list? We could probably just copy that. Yeah, let's copy this. Go back to our product. And below our constructor, let's put those there. Component did mount, wish list changed, and then let's create our let ns equals new notification service. And let's just clean this up a little bit here. Okay, so what we've done here is um, add observer, this dot on wish list changed, and that's looking good, and that's looking good there as well, too. So let's create that function. We're going to say on wish list changed. And we're going to say new wish list. In this case, we're not even going to use that wish list. We're just going to update the state of if it's on the wish list or not. So this dot set state on wish list is going to be ds dot item on wish list. This dot props dot product. So again, what we're doing here is we're what we're doing is we're changing the state by adding or removing something. Okay which of course sends a notification from the data server saying, hey, something's changed. Well, we need to listen for that change here so we can set the state, which of course, whenever we set the state, okay, it's going to uh, refresh this. Now I could have set it here and unbutton click. I could have done it after the fact, but the reason why I didn't do that is because we don't want to race condition. We don't want a condition where, um, like let's say we this gets called first, the changing of the state before the notification is able to, before the data is able to save it. It's, it's probably not likely, but it's just best to do things through the observer pattern with notifications. And that's what we're doing here. Now we're refreshing the UI so we can actually see the changes. So let's go back to our browser. And hopefully they turn red this time. And they still did not. 
Did we do anything wrong? They're not turning red. On wish list changed. On wish list changed. This. Oh, I didn't bind. This dot on wish list changed equals this dot on wish list changed dot bind this. Woo! Woo! Okay. <laughs> One little thing, right? One little thing. Pretty cool, right? So look at this. Add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. Remove from cart, remove from cart, remove from cart. That is pretty darn cool. We only have one more thing to do, so let's just do it now. Let's get these buttons uh, working and being removed when we actually click on them. So let's move this out of the way. I think this one will be a lot easier. We just uh, we handle the click and then we remove the product. And everything else is already in place. All the listeners, everything. Uh, so it'll match up automatically. And that's one of the cool things about working with these services is once you change something here, everything else is already in place and it just works out of the box. So what we want to do is here in this um, this uh, link, this link tag, is do our onclick. So onclick is going to be equal to, and we'll do our special curly braces there, and we'll do our, our function arrow syntax here. We'll say this dot remove product which we have not created yet. So let's create our constructor, props, and then super props, and then we'll bind. We'll say this dot remove product equals this dot remove product dot bind this, and let's actually create that function, remove product, equals equals okay I think that's all we got to do and then all we got to do here is say ds dot remove wish list item this dot props dot product cool I think that'll do the trick so all we've done here is when it's clicked we call this function okay that removes the product so it deletes it boom Remove wish list item, okay? And because our wish list is going to refresh, this will automatically refresh, so I don't need to worry about um, doing a set state here or anything because the, the, the upper level component will refresh, and therefore this will refresh, I believe. So let's give this a shot. Let's go to our application, and we've got an error. DS is not defined. Um, oh, we didn't put our, our notification service in here or data service, I mean. Import data service from dot dot slash uh, services slash data service. There we go. Services slash data service. And then let ds equals new data service. Yeah. Let's give it a shot now. Add to cart. Add to cart. Add to cart. Remove, remove, remove. Ooh, look at this. So what is really cool is our notification system, let's say you're building out an entire e-commerce platform or a massive website. You could use this same notification system, copy and paste this code, and it will work in your entire application, and your components will be working magically just like this. Pretty darn cool. Look how these components are just instantly updating, and uh, but they're not connected at all, which means they're reusable, uh, which I think is, is amazing. Um, and, I mean, just to show you, uh, I'm, we, what we could do here is in our app.js, just to show you how reusable this is, you know, um, we got a row here, okay? What if I set a new row down below, div class name equals row, like so. And then let's say we did, um, div class name call dash sm dash four and let's just say we want to put another wish list in like so just you know just copy and paste this one tag all right okay now we got a wish list down here and look it's working too it's working too and and because they're working from the same data set um they're they're matching but you know what we could have 
what we could have done here if we wanted to is we could have said wish list which data set do you want to point to we could have passed in a data set right here and then so you could have um, husband's wish list wife's wish list and they'd have different items on them uh, you could choose between wish lists but my point is look how look how easy it was we just copied and pasted a tag and it's already working okay that is the miracle uh, of react is, is those components being able to be reusable highly modularized so Congratulations. This is it. We, we're done. You've just built a uh, very uh, interactive um, application. You've built a foundation for it, and you could take this as far as you want. And there's so many more things to learn. These are the, the things you've been learning here are the basics. Uh, you can take a deep dive into React. You can get into Angular too. You can start diving deeper into Node or backend stuff. Uh, there's so much more to go. This is just scratching the surface, but you're learning a lot. So keep moving forward. Make sure you code every single day. This is Mark Price with DevSlopes.com. See you later.